So, thank y'all for tuning in once again, party people. I appreciate the love and support. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Before we get into that, let me get a haircut, though. All right, party people, we are back. You know, I got that haircut, so on and so forth. Um, all right, let's be serious for a second. As you guys see, we're trying to keep the channel and the content fresh. Um, we're definitely happy with how the last video did, but we can always do better. We stay trying to push the ticket over here at the Stevenson scale. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the thinking cap off. You know what I'm saying? Because me and Shardy decided we're thinking too deeply into the situation. And we're gonna just do, you know? We're just gonna throw ourselves into a topic, into a situation that we feel we have two cents on and send it y'all way. Y'all tell us what you think. Yes. Um, so I'm Joy. I live here in Las Vegas, but I'm a Los Angeles native as well. Okay. Nice to meet you, Joy. Thank you. So how did you feel when the pandemic first began? Um, I felt that it was really interesting to be alive during a time where something like that could take place. Um, it just being relatively young, I guess I'll say, you never think, hey, I'll live through a pandemic one day and get to talk about it and it'll be added to history books and I'll tell my kids and they'll tell their kids about this time where everything shut down for a little while and, you know, so it was just interesting to me as well. Did you lose anyone to the pandemic by chance? No, not personally. Um, thank God. I do have several family members that did test positive for COVID. And you hear so much about what's going on, that the disease was created or that it had already been around and that it's been weaponized. And it's really hard to get accurate research about what's going on. And, um, you know, now they have the vaccines rolling out. And I think that, like for me, for example, personally, my family, we don't get vaccinations in general. So the COVID was out the question. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it was completely out the question. And I think that one of the biggest hi. reasons why is because we don't hi. completely, hi baby. Hi. We don't completely hi. understand what's all going into it, whether it's regular vaccines or the COVID vaccine in general. Mm -hmm. And people are not taking the time to break down what ingredients are in there and allowing us to make an informed choice about what we are injecting into our bodies. And I think that also people who um, are in positions of power who have the opportunity to kind of address the reason why so many people of color distrust the government when it comes to things like that in general is preventing people from taking advantage of the vaccine. I've gone back and forth in my mind about it and whether or not that one would be worth it because especially like my son is going to preschool soon and you know just getting back to normalcy um, you know, we want to keep him safe. We want to be safe. But they came out with this vaccine really quick. Like I said, Very we're, you know, um, uh, like I said, we're a, fo a family that doesn't really believe in vaccines in general in the first place. So um, okay. I stuck to my guns and I'm like, nah, forget that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing it. But um, yeah, my thoughts about COVID has just been, it's, it's been really, really interesting. And I'm really looking forward to seeing kind of how that develops for people. Like if any issues come out of it or, if, you know, like any vaccine, it's not really guaranteed to prevent you from contracting the disease in the first place. So, right. you know. If anything, what did the pandemic teach you? Hi. Oh, um, it really, Hi. really taught Hi. me that um, even though I didn't experience any job loss, mm -hmm. it's not your interview. <laughs> <laughs> even though I, I was fortunate enough not to experience any job loss, mm -hmm. like um, I work for CPS here in Clark County, mm -hmm. and um, I do have a lot of clients that have experienced job loss that's really impacted their ability to care for their kids um, and just to provide for themselves in general. Um, one thing that it really allowed me to do, especially during my time that I was able to work from home, is to create a business and a brand for myself. That's something I've always wanted to do, and but it really put the fire under my butt and now I almost am ready to launch a business. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was one thing it really taught me was to be able to that natural Gatorade. You okay? Okay. So, yeah, um, for me, it's really taught me to be able to provide for yourself no matter what it is, to really assess your skill set and have a plan B or a side hustle or a legitimate business, whatever it might be, already established. So if and when things like that take place, that you're prepared and your family does not suffer because... Um, you're unemployed now, right? right. Um, and but that just goes for in general as well. Okay, everybody want to get out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think.
think that just goes in general with most people live paycheck to paycheck and um, I think this really highlighted um, the fact that like I said we just need to have a plan B or a plan A it can be a plan A you know what I'm saying and just get into a business for yourself and not be at the the whims of an employer who can say hey we're just laying off or right. you know what I'm saying whatever the case may be mm -hmm. one thing that really stood out to me is like so like I said I'm from LA mm -hmm. um, I went to college in New York and I haven't been in L um, to LA. I moved here directly after college. I haven't been to LA like in several years, like consistently. Um, I'll go visit, of course, because I still have family that lives there. But um, I haven't been consistently. And so my fiance loves Kobe. He loves the Staples Center, and we never stay downtown. So this last time, just recently, when my nephew just graduated a couple weeks ago, and we went to LA, I booked a hotel downtown. But I hadn't been there in years, and to see the homelessness and how it's really, really just everywhere. I mean, tents taller than me. You know what I'm saying? And to see that impact on how, I know they were housing people in old hotels and now they're kind of like kicking them out. And from what I've heard, you can't go to Santa Monica Pier. You can't go to Venice Beach. All these places that I enjoyed and really have positive experiences and memories with growing up as a child are no longer what we recall them being. And for people who are low income or middle income, and that is their fun, that is their relief to get away from the, really the traumatized, the community traumatization that goes on in their communities from gang violence and all this different stuff. You can't even take your kids to the Redondo Beach Arcade anymore. You know, these little things that we do to get away from these environments that are um, not being taken care of the way they should be. Just to go back to it again, I think that really we just need to get our heads straight, practice group ep economics. If you're not in a position on your own to um, like really have an impact on your community or to become self-sufficient, it's not your interview. <laughs> <laughs> to become self-sufficient, I, I think those things are really, really important. So that's kind of like the impact this had on me at least. And I try to spread that um, information and ideology to my friends and family and kind of allow them to move at their own pace when they're ready, but wow. just to be a resource to them. That's what my business is all going to be about, is really helping people who want to generate additional streams of income to do that successfully, no matter how it is, if they want to do it or brainstorm their purpose or their vision, because I feel like we all have one. Um, yeah. It's just about, you know, believing in yourself. Yeah. Okay. So my, my closing question would be, Tina, yeah. you have two beautiful boys here. Thank um, you. No problem, no problem. <laughs> What lessons have the pandemic taught you that you would pass on to your kids? Oh, the business for sure. The business for sure. I think um, always to do your research. So anytime anybody's presenting something to you or otherwise, you always want to do your research. You want to believe in yourself and believe that you're self-sufficient enough to um, put your ideology out there, build a brand, know who you are, especially as a black man in this country, um, to really you know, defy the stereotypes like loudly, unapologetically, you know, be smart, be a business owner, be a, um, a creative person, you know what I'm saying? And just to do something different because like, you know, they're building prisons for our young kids based on what they're doing at a third grade level. You know, if you, if you aren't meeting objectives and things like that, they're literally making projections about how many prisons to build. So I think that, um, um, especially being, <laughs> you know, a couple <laughs> mm -hmm. of boys. Um, it's just really to stick together. Like I said, also practice that group economics, help each other. Um, just none of the silliness that we know, you know, growing up in LA. Um, you know, not participating, rejecting gang violence. Um, being so comfortable with yourself that you are not affected by peer pressure, that you can actually step outside of what the general role that people expect the black man to feel in like LA, Chicago, Atlanta, Detroit, all these places, and be willing to talk to somebody and say, hey, there's another way. Because Let's be real, if you can sell drugs, you can be a legitimate business person because you already uh, work just as hard. Right. You know what I'm saying? You are being as creative, you're handling finances, you're really measuring out supply and demand like you're doing all this stuff that can really be legitimized and there's people in the hood that have so many skills and talents that just go unnoticed unnoticed right or even just like people who um like i have a friend who does lashes and i try to tell her like hey go group up with some other people get you a nail tech get you a hairstylist get you a masseuse build up some business credit go rent out a space in beverly hills on melrose and be a one-stop shop 
Be careful. Okay? Um, and make your money. Make yeah. your money. Live free. Employ other people. You don't have to pluck another lash if you don't want to. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get a barber in there. Make it for men and women. Like, I try to, I have friends that are just hairstylists that are the best braiders and the best extension experts. You know what I'm saying? That you can even imagine. And it's like, y'all are just doing this, you know, unlicensed or without a storefront of brick and mortar for years and years and you already have a clientele you closer to your goals than i am you know what i'm saying people i have a friend who um one thing that really impacts her is that she didn't go to college and i'm like so what you closer to your net worth than me i gotta dig myself out of debt first and really that's not what's about to make me right now right. like so really it's just about the family time i got during the pandemic I, to stay home with my boys and to um, be able to see them every day and not have to leave. That's going to end soon. But <laughs> um, so it really just teaches me um, going back to the lessons about like thinking about more than what you want um, outside of money. So like when you're thinking about what you want to do with your life and your purpose, um, you want to be thinking about flexibility. You want to be thinking about time freedom. You know what I'm saying? You want to be having the ability to travel. You want to have the ability to travel if that's what you want to do. You want to have the ability to give back to your community. You want to be the person that has a name on the local library or the local elementary school because you were able to make a substantial donation to really um, improve the quality of our local public schools since they're funded by our dollars and not federal dollars. You know what I'm saying? So it really makes, you know, so it's like at this point, I feel like when we look at the generations that came before us, um, they were kind of showing us the blueprint and the hard work that it takes, but they were still kind of asking at the end of the day for equality. And I feel like one thing I really like about our generation that has become apparent from the pandemic is that we're more of doers. So to not ask for the opportunity, but to create the opportunity for ourselves. And so, yeah, in a nutshell, that's what I'd be passing down to my kids. Thank you. Thank you. That was a beautiful answer. How could the people reach you if you wanted them to? Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna lie. My Facebook is a little bit out of date, mm -hmm. but I definitely still check it. And um, my name is my full name is Joyce Lynn yeah. Hutton. So if you have questions or would like to follow up or anything like that, you can reach me on Facebook. Would be the best way to reach out, I would say. And um, again, that's Joyce Lynn Hutton. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Day. You too. How did you feel when the pandemic just uh, when the pandemic began? Yeah. Um, well, at first, so I'm working at Lids, right? I mean, I'm I'm really like doing my thing, trying to on the low ski. I probably can get hired back if I say this, but I was making my clothes and shit. So I'm like, okay, less people coming in, more time for me. And then I realized, well, damn, I got got notice. I can't go to work. You know, the fees still adding up, bills still piling up. So it seemed like a quick little vacate, but it didn't come with no pay at first. So I was kind of scared. But um, it helped me understand myself. I understand the real value of life. When you take away, we live in this world where like you get so caught up in survival tactics and, and like survival that you end up monetizing your, like looking at yourself, valuing yourself based on monetary value. That's the best way I could put it. Mm -hmm. And it helped me value myself to a higher degree and still consume monetary value because I think ample, when you level yourself up, everything else seems to follow. Um, so it just helped me push myself a little bit harder, truthfully. Um, definitely was not the easiest things to do. Went through my own little mental battles like everybody in the pandemic. But um, it helped me better myself. So, you know, it's a blessing and a curse in the same thing, you know. That's all in which you make it. Right, right. Now, having gone through the pandemic, mm -hmm. how would you go about this next time? Well, I hope they're in the next time, first of all. <laughs> Seeing um, how they come around once every hundred years. <laughs> right. You know? You know, but if I am around, shoot, God willing, I hopefully am around. You know, I don't want to expire too soon. But um, truthfully, I think, I think the question is, how do you go about it before that? I don't think I prepared myself financially, mentally even health-wise before that. Um, I was on the road to doing so, but it definitely made me pick up the speed, pick up the pace. So I think, you know, that that good thing, like, uh, you know, I'm gonna play a part in Sugar Free. You know, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. So, <laughs> you gotta just stay ready. I think that that's what really got me. Uh, that's that's the mode I always took for the rest of the, from the pandemic to continuing. It was like, stay ready, you know? Because, I mean, I did it. Getting presented with opportunities during the pandemic that 
really were unseen by most people. So I think that's something that came with it. That was a blessing to me. But that also had to do with like my drive as well. You know, in the time of defeat, how do you, are you going to continue or are you going to turn back and tuck your tail? Right. So I had to go head first against the grain and it still worked out, thankfully. But um, I think definitely staying prepared and, you know, financially, spiritually, mentally, at all times. It's, you know, it's something that's, that's, that's true. I feel like we lost a lot of people mentally to this pandemic that we don't even understand or even know yet. You know, a lot of people just now these cities opening back up and a lot of people aren't prepared for, to even go back to work or even haven't had the mental capacity to even be okay with themselves. So I think uh, staying prepared at all times is what I took from it. Right, right. So did you lose anybody to the pandemic by chance? No, thankfully I did not. Thankfully I did not. That's right. Um, Good health, good strength. So that's right. So do you feel like do you feel like you yourself, your mental health took a hit through the pandemic? Definitely, okay. definitely. Cause I can't tell you like I'm an independent artist, but I'm still a human being. Right. You know, right. I still was going through normal life shit with the abnormally abnormalities of the abnormalities of life. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but it, but it, but it made me stronger. It made me much stronger mentally, physically, um, spiritually. Like I said, I definitely had to tap into self and really dig deep as to what I really wanted out of myself. And I think once I started doing that, everything else around me started to evolve in a better way. Because I mean, losing jobs and things of that nature, you know, it fucks with your mind, especially as a man not having money and, you know, not not to the access you would ex expect. You know, um, especially when you got your plan, you know, and the universe and God got their own. So, um, accepting that, you know, you can't control everything, but the things you can control hold dear to you. Not not in the sense of, like, wanting to control, but being aware of, you know, the things you can prevent as well within self. Because I think sometimes, especially, I know for a fact, we can be, our, I'm my own worst enemies at times. And we had to, you had to sit with your worst enemy during this whole pandemic. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You like it or not, you can't come outside. So now me and me and my enemy, we going it, we going at it. <laughs> so I think that's the biggest thing I took from it was just don't be scared to continuously work on self, even if you're not liking what you see today. Tomorrow's a different day. I agree with that. I agree with that wholeheartedly, folks. So seeing how everything went down, and seeing how you had to prepare yourself and you know recover from said losses. What advice would you give your kids moving forward? I mean, be okay with yourself. I mean, to any degree, whether you have the things that make you comfortable, materialistically or not, like any material item you've, you've inquired is going to stay with you if it's meant to be with you. You know, that's one thing I had to really understand too, is like, and we live in this world that we value so many things but ourselves. So really just stick to stay true to yourself and as long as you are okay with self to to the naked degree, you know, like without anything. If you can sit with yourself and be okay, then you you in a higher realm than anybody that has a million dollars in their bank. Truthfully. <laughs> you know, a millionaire mindset starts with the mindset. So it definitely helped me change from being broke minded or develop or breaking the barriers of being broke minded to really kicking in the door, you know, well. And, and really knowledge. Knowledge is wealth, and I think for me, I tapped into more self and started reading more, looking for, seeking more knowledge and seeking more um, more resources to prepare myself to, for when the pandemic ended, you know? I think that, that piss poor preparation is always gonna lead to piss poor performance, so. Plus two equals four, if you ask me. You know what I'm saying? Last <laughs> time I checked, you know, somebody got something else to say, let me know. <laughs> right, right. What lessons have the pandemic taught you, if any? That nothing is set in stone. This economy that we built is obviously not set in stone, you know? Um, and to cherish those around you. I think we, we, for me, it was like I realized the devaluing of material items and things that we hold so dear as people 
in this, you know, modern day economy. And I started to value like, not that I didn't value the people around me, but shit, when people dropping like flies on the news, you gotta start looking around and being like, wow, like what has this person done to impact my life? You know, and I think, what am I doing to impact other people's life? So I think for me, it helped me understand and value people more, truthfully, because at the end of the day, like the vibration we create ain't gonna change, you know? The material items we wear or drive, that changes day to day. So do our bank accounts. But the one thing about us is like, as humans, uh, we have to treat each other with more respect and understanding. I think that's what really opened my eyes to this whole thing. And I think it really opened my eyes more because I saw other people starting to understand what I've already been understanding, you know? And that was a good thing to see as well. You know, there's people on the flip side, but you know, they're gonna go over the wayside. At the end of the day, like, it's more so like, what? what can you bring to the table and how can we help each other even as people regardless of what we can make or how much money we can make through our businesses like how can we help each other on a mental level and therefore take the steps to proceed further big facts big facts alright so in closing in closing what do you think we could do differently you know as a collective to uh, to look out for one another through such times I mean, truthfully, speak up. I think one thing I realized that's so vital and that we truly lack as humans on this earth is communication. <laughs> communication is very key when it comes to, you know, speaking out, opening, asking the door for help. Opening, you never know what door, you, you know, is gonna open if you knock on it. And that's clearly what I, I, what I realized. Like, don't be scared to take a chance on yourself and take a chance on somebody else because at the end of the day, you may not know what they're going through, and I might not know. You know, you may not know what I'm going through. So, if we're here in this moment, let's make it count for both of us. Truthfully, uh, that's that's already that's something I carry with, with myself. But even more so through the pandemic, it's like if there was any resource I had to help anybody, I definitely would reach out and have have that. You know give that knowledge. I think that's one thing that was shared more so with this whole pandemic than anything. We lost money, but we gained knowledge for those who really sought, seeked out for it, you know? So, you know, who's Tay Morris? Tamo 2.0. Back at it again with the boy Madman Myron. Just trying to do what I gotta do. You know? <laughs> Say hello. How you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. So if you don't mind, would you mind introducing yourself to the camera? Sure. My name is Ebony, and I am the founder of Hearts of Diamonds LLC, which you can find me online, of course. Um, it is a socializing network and a development company. So my first question is, what were your thoughts when it when the pandemic first began? So when the pandemic first began, um, it was definitely one of those things where I didn't think it was real, of course, because you hear about certain things happening all over the world um all the time so you're just kind of like oh that it'll never make it here you know it won't be that much of an issue and when it did it was kind of like a reality check i immediately became scared because you don't know what to do it's the unknown virus um and it was killing a lot of people so it was definitely a, a scary moment did you yourself lose anybody to the pandemic um i did not personally lose anyone to the pandemic but i did know a lot of people who lost loved ones uh, due to the pandemic um, so that was definitely again alarming and scary <laughs> of course definitely scary yeah how did you get through it um for me I'm, I'm, I'm more of a I got it you got you for me I, I think logically you get what I'm saying um I did initially I was still out there with no mask going to work and doing things like that um but what I did was, as soon as I started to hear certain things about the virus, like your vitamins and things like that, I just started to educate myself a little bit more on it. Um, and once I found out it was a respiratory, it really attacked your lungs and things like that, I started to take precaution. You know what I mean? Take Taking vitamins, um, staying away from people, stop company from coming over, you know, and stop going outside for the most part. So that is initially what I decided to do then also I had to do a mental check I had to check in mentally because at this point I knew it was going to definitely hit hit hard because again it's unknown it's new and it's scary someone who's never been through people were dropping like flies literally so started to educate myself mostly do you feel you yourself and in your personal life your mental health struggle 
Um, mental health, yes, I do. I think that it did take a, um, a physical effect on us, especially in our black community, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it did. It. I think a, it drove a lot of people insane because, for one, you don't know what this virus is. For two, people are dying you know for unknown reasons and then you know you go into the hospital people aren't coming out the hospital and let's just be honest it's particularly our black people that were not coming out the hospital you know what i mean so we were not getting the same treatment as other people hit our communities really really bad so yeah mental health was definitely um the issue because you're locked inside the house you don't know what to do and it's just kind of like am you know am i next somebody in my family next you know you get a little cough here now the psych is playing with you so it definitely took a toll on the mental health aspect so if anything what did the hardship through the pandemic teach you um the hardship through the pandemic it number one taught me that you gotta first keep your faith number two it's okay to communicate and talk to people um something like that you have to reach out to other people in your circle or family or friends it taught me that we need to really come together and understand that we're all human you know what i mean and our mental health is important so it's okay for me to pick up the phone and probably call and cry it out you know what i mean it taught me that you know i need to learn to do for myself you know what i mean or do for self again another issue in our black community so it definitely brought out more um more diamonds if you ask me because you know there's a lot of pressure and under pressure diamonds are are you know that's how they form so um definitely made me stronger you know what i mean and i went through a point in my life too where or a point during this pandemic well actually a whole year later where um someone in my household actually caught it and it was definitely eye opener which really made me like really we don't want a whole year and now you know what i mean this so it taught me a lot it really did the importance of taking care of your temple and your mental and it's okay to talk about it it's okay to cry it's okay to do all those things like it really is and we need to take that more seriously. Absolutely. Seeing how you've already been through this one go round and pandemics happen once every hundred years, how would mm-hmm. you prepare yourself not having gone through this? Um, how would I have prepared myself if yes, I had not no. experienced it this time? Around? No, no, no. Oh. So having gone through it this time, how would you prepare for it next time? Oh, well, I'm going to tell you this. This pandemic, let me put it to you like this pandemic, definitely um, you do have them every 100 years, every time they develop something um next time it's kind of like i I honestly honestly personally i don't think it's gonna be a next time but that's just me um before 100 years at least we're gonna see a lot of different things so you know making sure that you grow your own food you have your own money your own business um you are mentally able to understand it's okay to communicate try to stay away from the negative thoughts um, prepare your house, you know what I mean? You got to buy land. Just If you want me to get to the technicals, I can get to the technicals. But, yeah, you just want to make sure that you take care of your body. And the, the most important thing is have a have a spiritual relationship. You know, it's a lot of spirituality out there. So make sure you connect and have that spiritual relationship because I think that that's definitely one of the things that will help you the next time something like this happens. And it will be a next time, and the next time is not going to be 100 years from now. It's going to be a lot sooner than what people think right. it's going to be. We would hope not. <laughs> it's going. It's not going to be a pandemic either. It's going to be. It's going to be different. It's going to be war. You, you, uh, I won't say much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what advice would you give your kids? Um, the first thing I would tell my children is number one: make sure you stay spiritually grounded. Make sure you understand that family is important. Y'all stick together no matter what. You know what I mean? Take care of your body. Take care of your mental sanity and, you know, just do everything possible you can to protect yourself and protect your those close to you, such as your siblings. You understand what I'm saying? So that would be my first thing. The things, well, that wouldn't be the first things, but those are will be the things that I will have to instill in them because those are things that are priceless and everything else is just going to come. Learn how to grow your own food. Learn how to be dependent upon yourselves or each other. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, with everything that I experienced during this pandemic from the loss of jobs, I had to learn how to make my own money to take care of the house, you know what I mean? To health, we couldn't just run to the hospital because for one, I just, during the pandemic, I just didn't trust them, you know what I mean? Um, I don't trust them anyways, but I definitely didn't trust them in during the pandemic. So teaching my kids to learn how to 
take care of themselves um, using herbal medicines and things like that and just the importance of taking care of yourself from the jump period like and, and really holding down the, the family aspect and being there for each other. Right. This pandemic has made a lot of families and broken a lot of them up. You know? um, so if you are to be reached, if you want to be reached, how would people be able to reach you? So you guys can reach me on social media. Um, on Facebook, it is Hearts of Diamonds, and it is H A R T Z O F D Y M O N D Z. And on Facebook, I'm sorry, on Snapchat, you can snap me at a underscore real underscore H A R T E, which is also my Instagram handle as well. Um, you can also find my website at Hearts of Diamonds. LLC.com and that's again H A R T Z O F D Y M O N D Z L L C dot com. <laughs> thank you for joining us today. No, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I think this is definitely a great, great opportunity. So I appreciate it. Thank you. So my first question to you is what were your thoughts when the pandemic first began? How did you feel? Um honestly, I didn't know what to think or what to expect how to think how to feel for one because um there was a lot of things going on in the midst of the the beginning of the pandemic that i was already dealing with to where you know my anxiety kind of maximized once i found out that you know this disease or virus or whatever the case may be was causing so many um, deaths so honestly in the beginning of the pandemic all I could feel was fear you know I was anxious I was scared and just the thought of the unknown was kind of like taking over at that point did you lose anyone to it? Um, no, no one personally. I do know a few people close to me that have lost loved ones. Uh, one being my best friend, lost her grandmother. Um, and I knew a couple people that tested positive for COVID. Um, and the height of it all, I know that, you know, for us first moving out here to Vegas, I remember, you know, we had it, we did, we had it. Um, we end up getting COVID. That was the scariest moment of my life, honestly. But as far as people passing away from getting it, no one personal to me, like no family members of mine have passed away, but people that I do know that that's a positive, um, their family members have passed away. How did you get through it? What were some of the things that you did to keep yourself balanced, keep yourself cool, calm, and collected? I'm still doing it, honestly. Um, I feel like I haven't gotten fully through it because it's still happening. I feel like a lot of what I do now is still to cope with what is to come and what's happening now. So what I do is I write. I started a small business, so I lash. I make skincare products and things like that to keep myself sane. And I do my makeup from time to time when I feel anxious just to get my mind off of what is bothering me at the moment or I talk about it. Do you feel like your mental health struggle through the pandemic? Definitely. Right Definitely. Um, I already have um, anxiety and I suffer from depression from a lot of trauma that has happened in my life. I feel like this on top of everything else just um, intensify, intensified what I already feel. Um, so I feel like my anxiety has gotten worse. I panic a lot more than what I used to. And I worry about the unexpected when I shouldn't, you know. I mean, I feel like it's a lot that happens in life that we shouldn't really, you know, worry about because we can't control it. But I feel like those things that I just can't control or I really don't have an understanding of it yet, it, that's what makes me panic. So if anything, what did the hardships of the pandemic teach you? To keep going. Um, life goes on. It taught me honestly to love thyself and stick close to the people that are close to you. So meaning getting closer to family, getting 
back into um, just knowing who you are, starting to engage with um, the spirit, the spiritual realm. Honestly, it just it gives me that 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 sense of getting closer to a higher power. I feel like the the only thing that has kept me sane, honestly, is knowing that there is someone, something um, higher than me or more powerful than me that is keeping me uh, grounded um, along with those around me that, you know, speak wisdom and positivity into me as well. So now having gone through this yourself, how would you prepare yourself for it next time, seeing how they come around and come to your um, honestly, I just know that I need to keep vitamins in me. Um, women, women are already deficient in multiple vitamins that we already, that we need, such as like iron, vitamin D, calcium, and things like that. Um, so just sticking to a herb-based type of, you know, not really a diet, but just Sticking to my herbs, you know, sticking to my vitamins, making sure that I am um, basically sticking to my vitamins, making sure that I stay prepared, you know, so keeping my mask or my, my distance and just making sure that I am, you know, fully cautious of, you know, what's going on around me. So moving forward, what advice would you give your kids based on your first hand knowledge? Um, the one thing I can say is stay knowledgeable to what's going on. Just stay in the now. Um, research. Um, don't take anything that you can't pronounce, spell, or even, you know, name off what's in it off top of your head. If you if you aren't a hundred percent sure of what it might do to you, don't take it. If you are not a hundred percent sure of, you know, what the effects are, you know, do 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 what you've been doing to keep yourself uh healthy and in your right mind. If you do feel like you, you know, it's not working or you need some some further knowledge or whatever the case may be, do your research before just, you know, saying yes to anything. Um, honestly, I really just want to say that, let me say this, my one advice that I can give to my black people, my black community, is it's okay to not be okay. Speak. You know, there's someone out there that is going through exactly what you're going through. We feel the exact same things. You're not alone in what you think you're alone in. There's someone willing to listen to you. You are enough. Someone does love you if no one else told you I do and Just be okay with not being okay. It's it, you don't have to be perfectly fine all the time. It, yeah I mean, that's I guess that's what I would have to say <laughs>